We'll call the meeting to order. Ask the secretary to call the roll. Here. 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 Chair notes we have a quorum to conduct business at this meeting. At this time, I'd like to welcome uh, Director McCaleb, Secretary McCaleb. He's been in all, he's done it all for some uh, announcements. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to uh, identify and introduce two of our authority members, uh, Dana Weber on the front row down here and Ken Adams. I are being the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority. <laughs> Didn't need to identify. We're still learning our new system, and we have to be uh, smart enough to push the buttons all day long. I haven't figured it out yet, but we'll get there. Um, we appreciate you being here. We have an item later on. We're going to talk about uh, some things that the Turnpike Authority has going on, and we really appreciate you guys being here. It's uh, a great working relationship that ODOT has with the Turnpike Authority, and uh, we're so glad that Neil has agreed to head that thing up as they roll forward. Temporarily. <laughs> I don't know if y'all have noticed, but both of the guys to my right keep saying temporarily everywhere they go, and uh, maybe when they take the dirt nap. <laughs> I don't know if you're supposed to respond to that or not. We'll move on, and uh, we, we have more announcements and presents. You got a joke every now and then, you know. Uh, uh, we have some more announcements and presentations, and we'll call on Mr. Green. Not sure how to follow that. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Mr. Secretary, Mr. Secretary, Commissioners, uh, I got to share with you, it's a great privilege to come up and talk about our uh, Work Zone Warriors uh, program. As you know, middle of April, we had our National Work Zone Awareness Week. Uh, but we've extended, ODOT has extended that work zone awareness campaign. And uh, part of that has been our work zone warriors that we put out there that's kind of a personalized uh, thing we put on a Facebook page that people can recognize and try to humanize uh, that these are real people out there and there's real impacts to uh, driving through work zones recklessly. So I'd like to ask all the work zone warriors to stand up. take a picture afterwards. Oh, yeah, after everything. Uh, you know, as we continue to highlight our work zone safety throughout the month of May, this has been an ongoing campaign uh, to recognize our statewide crews for round the clock dedication and commitment to our highway safety and, and keeping our public safe as they travel. Uh, obviously, some of us have worn more orange than others, but uh, we wear orange in uh, support of our work zone warriors and as such they've shared stories of events that have happened on projects or work zones they share their concerns they also share with us their families and that's important as we uh, realize that and i think one thing oklahomans all identify with is the importance of family so getting that word out there and sharing it with them hopefully that'll resonate as they drive through a work zone hopefully it'll let them know that uh, it's not okay to endanger their lives by taking a phone call or a text or driving say, uh, unsafe speeds through a work zone to try to make up time or whatever. And if nothing else, uh, one thing that's been brought out in this is that 80% of the fatalities that happen in work zones are the driver or a passenger in one of the vehicles. So we really want to reach out to the public and, and talk about the importance of work zone safety and uh, we sure want to 
say our appreciation to all the folks that have been willing to do this and, and uh, take part in it. It's a big deal. And they're representing hundreds of people around the state that get out there every day and, and put themselves at risk to maintain our highways. So just want to thank them one more time. Thank you. We certainly appreciate you guys also. We know who you represent and that it's an education and an experience uh, that gets us there. Uh, for you guys that don't have on orange today, we've got these little uh, ribbons we can give you because we need everybody to know how important it is. 365 days a year, all day long, every minute of the day. Thank you. Hey, special recognition to the commissioner from Tulsa, in case you didn't know. Keep me in the head. Uh, and we certainly like orange when you're talking about safety. Uh, item number 58 is the approval of the minutes of the Transportation Commission meeting of April the 4th, 2016. Motion to approve item 58. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call the roll. Motion passes. We'll move to items 59 through 62, the consent docket. And uh, if there's any member that would like to take an item out of the consent docket and then discuss it separately, let it be known. Otherwise, we'll hear a motion. So moved. We have a motion to approve the consent docket. Second. We have a second to con approve the consent docket. We'll vote. Motion passes. We'll move to item 63, the engineering contracts to be presented by Mr. Tiegler. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Secretary, Mr. Secretary, members of the commission. Item 63 are the engineering contracts this month. I have three parts. Part A is in Marshall County, District 2. This is to provide engineering and construction plans for the US 70 Medill realignment. This is with BKL uh, for $783,708. Part B, Logan and Payne counties in District 4. This is it for engineering and construction plans for two projects, State Highway 33 over the Cimarron River, and also State Highway 33 from one mile east of Logan County line, extending east 6.9 miles. This is with EST for $1,277,900. And Part C, Grady County, this is District 7, provide engineering and construction plans for US 81 from a mile north of the 81 US 277 junction south of Chickasha, extending northwest 8.63 miles to 0.85 miles north of the US 62, US 81 junction. This is with Triad Design Group for $3,305,800. I can answer any questions and your approval is recommended. You've heard the presentation of item number 63 by Mr. Tigler. <coughs> Much pleasure. I don't guess we do that anymore, do we? <laughs> We just vote? No, we need a motion. I'll Thank you the for motion. the motion. Second. I'll second. We have a second for approval. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll take the vote. All right, the motion passes. Now, for you guys that don't know, this is, we still have our training wheels on for this new voting system. And uh, there is some education up here, but uh, I don't know how much common sense, so we're having, to, <laughs> we're having a little trouble here. We'll get through it. Item number 64 is engineering contract supplements. And uh, 
feel free to point out our failures as you go along in our you're, voting. You're, you're doing fine, Commissioner. <laughs> Item 64, the engineering contract supplements. I have nine parts this month. Part A is a statewide to provide on-demand bridge re rehabilitation projects for, with CEC Corporation, EST, Guy Engineering, formerly Nichols Consulting, and Poe & Associates. It's for $200,000 for the aggregate increase of these supplements. Part B, statewide also to provide off-system bridge inspection agreements with CED4, CED7, and CED8. And it is for $40,000, $10,000, and $6,000 respectively for a total estimate, uh, estimate of $56,000. Part C in Sequoia County. This is Commission District 1 to perform engineering and prepare final plans for I-40 and US-59 interchange with Triad Design Group for $990,600. Part D, Marshall County, District 2, this is for engineering and final design plans for US-70 Medill realignment with EST for $892,725. Part E, Marshall County, Commission District 2, perform engineering and uh, final design plans for State Highway 99, US-377 over Lake Texoma, also known as the Willis Bridge, with White Engineering Associates for $994,000. Part F, Pottawatomie County, District 3, for engineering and final plans for US 270 over US 270B with Aguirre and Fields for $7,100. Part G in Washita County, District 5, for engineering and final plans for State Highway 152 over East Elk Creek with Atkins North America for $19,500. Part H, Murray County and District 7, for engineering and final plans for US 77 over Honey Creek. Guy Engineering Services for $93,069. And finally, I, uh, Craig County and District 8 for engineering and final plans for US 59 over the MKT Railroad with professional engineering consultants for $17,702. Try to answer any questions that you may have, and uh, approval is recommended. You've heard the presentation. Watch your present on <coughs> item number 64. Motion approved. We have a motion to approve. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, everybody vote. Motion passes. We'll move to the lettings. Mr. Atkins. Thank you. Mr. Com uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Secretaries, members of the Commission, item 65 consists of the final July, the tentative August, and the tentative September 2016 bid openings, and the Department recommends a, uh, approval of item 65. You've previously been uh, sent the items and further explanation of them. What's your pleasure for item number 65? Motion to approve item 65. We have a motion to approve item 65. Second. second. We have a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, vote. Motion passes. We'll hear item 66 from Mr. Raymond. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Secretaries, members of the commission. I'd like to present item 66, parts A through R. These represent the change orders with a cumulative total of $50,000 or less per project. This item is for your information only. No action is necessary. I'll be glad to try to answer any questions that you might have. If there are no questions from Mr. Raymond on item 66, we'll move to item 67. Thank you. I'd like to present item 67, parts A through U. These represent the change orders on projects with a cumulative total greater than $50,000, and your approval is recommended. Motion to approve. approve item 67. We have a motion. I'll second. And a second. Please vote if there are no further questions. Motion passes. Thank you. Mr. Dels, we're ready for the awards. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Secretary Ridley, Secretary Caleb. Um, 
Item 68 are our recommendations from the April uh, 21st bid opening. It is recommended that the following items from the letting referred to by call order be awarded. As call order is 110, excuse me, call order 10, 20, 25, 40 with all add alternates, 50, 60, 70, 75, 80, 90, 100, 105, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190, 195, 205, 210, 220, 230, 240, 250, 260 through the second low bidder, 265, 270, 275, and 290. It is recommended that the following items from the letting referred to by call order be rejected. It's called order 77 and 280. This concludes our recommendations for award and your approval is requested. Thank you, Mr. Dales. You've heard his recommendation. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Second. We have a second for approval. Any further discussion? Vote at your pleasure. Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Dales. We'll move to item number 69, driving forward, turnpike construction. Director McCaleb. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we're privileged to be here this morning to present, uh, uh, for discussion purposes, uh, the proposed alignments for two greenfield projects, uh, one along uh, a corridor connecting the John Kilpatrick Turnpike at I-40 around to, uh, well, uh, let me take these in a different sequence. Uh, can we put those up? What do I do to put those up? I'll start with the Eastern Loop first. Um, just a second. <clears throat> the Eastern Loop uh, is uh, authorized by the legislature in uh, 1986 and uh, connects I-40 with I-44. Uh, and uh, runs along a route. I'll let that one back here. Okay, thank you. Runs along a route roughly parallel uh, to Luther Road, taking off of uh, I-44, uh, just east of Luther Road, proceeding north, uh, along uh, just west of Luther Road, uh, and going all the way to 21 miles to the uh, junction of I-44, about three miles west or east of the current uh, Luther Interchange. Um, this route is uh, created uh, and implemented to relieve the congestion that exists on I-35 uh, with its high traffic counts and consequent fatality rates, uh, and to expand uh, the turnpike system to include the Eastern Loop in Oklahoma County as authorized by the legislature. If we can go to the Southwest Loop. The Southwest Loop, uh, again, was authorized by the legislature in 1987 it was uh, subject of a, a, a corridor study by ACOG and ODOT in 1999 that uh, designated this approximate corridor uh, to go from I-44 uh, towards I-35. Actually, this proposed route terminates uh, with the junction of State Highway 152, or I know it, Airport Road, and uh, is seven miles long. Uh, it's a, the route is very narrowly circumscribed by the extensive residential development that's taken place in the area. So there's not a lot of wiggle room in there. Uh, there's uh, uh, the interchanges are shown. There's a half diamond at 15th Street a split diamond at uh, at uh, Sarah Road and I-40 
and uh, Southeast 29th, Southwest 29th, um, another half diamond at uh, proposed at uh, Southwest 44th, the full diamond at uh, Morgan Road, and then of course the connecting interchange at uh, the inter junction of uh, 152, just west of Council Road. Um, those are the alignments that have been previously approved this morning by the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority. Subsequent to considerable public information that has gone on, uh, there's been, in each alignment, each of the Greenfield alignments, there's been three public hearings. The first to generally introduce the need and understanding of the projects. The second, uh, and, and to introduce the corridor, which was two miles wide. Uh, on the Eastern Loop, and the second to present a preliminary alignment for the comment and discussion uh, with the people in the affected area. Uh, and subsequent to that and the interpretation of the comments that were received, uh, we did make some adjustments that improved the engineering uh, aspects of the project as well as accommodation to some of the people in the area, and then a third and final public hearing for what we call the design alignment, uh, which is what you see before you this morning, uh, which is the prerequisite or the predicate to beginning the actual engineering of these facilities, uh, the line and grade surveys, uh, geotechnical studies, and other activities that will determine the uh, extent and exact location of these uh, proposed transportation improvements uh, and, the and the subsequent acquisition of rights of way. I'd uh, be happy to respond to any questions or comments that you may have about this. Thank you, Director McCaleb. Recognize Director Patterson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, Mr. Secretary, thank you. You know, one of the things I think of when we think about the Turnpike Authority is all the positive solutions that they provided the state over the years. When you think back to 1953, when the Turner Turnpike opened and provided that great access between Oklahoma City and Tulsa, high speed, safe access, before there was an interstate system. Think about that. The interstate system created in 56, we had the Turner Turnpike in 1953. The folks at then the highway department knew exactly what needed to be done back in 1953, but didn't have the financial resources to do it. Tolling is certainly one of those options. And we've used that over the years here in Oklahoma to provide an ability to move now. And moving now is what we need to do. We have I-35 that at times during the day becomes gridlock. We have two interchanges here in Oklahoma City if you look out west on I-44 and I-40 that are becoming an, an unmanageable situation with over 140,000 cars today. So we have to do something. And ODOT can't do anything else. We can't widen I-35 anymore. The current widening project that we're working on on I-35 that started at downtown Oklahoma City and now is getting close to conclusion with Lindsay Street in Norman was started in 1979. 1979, it's taken us this long and it's all about money. Because we know what to do. We know how to do it. We just don't have the financial resources. So we have to turn to someone who can do something about that. And in this case, it's the Turnpike Authority. We have to provide in the metropolitan area safe, dependable transportation. And quite frankly, ODOT can't do it simply because of money. And so we're going to turn to the Turnpike Authority. It sounds like what they're proposing, and I know they've gone through an arduous process to get to this point, sounds like what they're proposing is a good idea. Seems very viable, and it's going to provide that solution, at least in part, to what we need here at ODOT. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Director Patterson. 
Secretary McCaleb, do you have further comments? Just to reminisce a little, um, Mr. Patterson indicated that that uh, facility was uh, opened in 1953. I was privileged to ride on that road as a senior in high school with two engineers from the Department of Transportation, or Highway Department, as it was called back then, my dad and Gaines Stout. And uh, I was just a kid. But these guys were just taken aback by the changes that were being manifested on the turnpike at that time because it was a precursor to the interstate system with its grade-separated interchanges and uh, high-speed straight roadways. Uh, and we have, uh, as a result of the vote of the people in 1954, expanded that system uh, by the ability to cross-pledge our revenues. And we now have 602 miles of that type of road in Oklahoma that we would not otherwise have without the Turnpike Authority. Sorry for that little commercial, but. <laughs> I knew we were gonna get it sooner or later. <laughs> Secretary Ridley, further comments? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Secretary, Director. Uh, Mike certainly laid out the problem, uh, talking about the, uh, his inability to do what he know needs to be done. Uh, Secretary McCaleb, uh, brought out a solution uh, and that was passed at the Turnpike Authority meeting today on these two corridors. And this is the start of, of, a, of a progress that will take probably about three years for us to, for Turnpike Authority to build, uh, maybe a little longer. I'd like to do it a little long, a little shorter than that. Uh, but it's part of the plan that the governor made the announcement back in October, realizing that she didn't want our state to become like other states in other major metropolitan areas, uh, become gridlock and then no way to be able to do anything to correct the problem. She wanted us to uh, look at both the Tulsa metropolitan area as well as the Oklahoma City metropolitan area and the existing turnpikes to see what is it that we need to do to ensure that we don't get behind. And Turning to the ODOT, turning to the turnpike for assistance, is, as Director Patterson pointed out, is not unusual. It's been this way for more than 60 years. And the thing is, is that the Turnpike Authority and the Department of Transportation has worked closely together to solve problems because that's the business that this organization is in, that's the business that the Turnpike Authority uh, is in, and that's to solve problems. And working together, uh, they are really trying to address not only a serious problem uh, that we have today because that 20-minute drive from uh, Norman to Oklahoma City at times of the day uh, is a two-hour drive, depending on whether somebody has a flat tire on the side of the road. So consequently, they are looking to the future. They are looking to see what this city, what this state, what Tulsa needs to look like 20, 25 years from now. And this is the start of making those improvements that will uh, be here long after we're gone. And uh, the governor is extremely proud and pleased that both organizations are working together to try and solve a problem that not only exists today, but will be uh, causing us great concern in the future. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd ask both of you guys, you know, as a banker, you want to know, well, how's this going to affect us? How's it going to affect our rating at the Turnpike Authority? Where are we at? How are we ranked with other people? You know, we routinely keep up with that, but, you know, some of the, of the public may not uh, keep up with it. It might be a good time to let people know. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, the Oklahoma <coughs> Turnpike Authority is one of the highest rated, credibility-wise, of such organizations in the country. We have a double-A rating. There's no Turnpike Authority that has a higher credit rating than the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority does. And that's because over the 63 years, they've had careful management and uh, uh, a great sensitivity to their fiduciary responsibility. You know, that's 
probably the most important thing that we can do credibility wise and I, you know I know that uh, you guys have been here a long time you're long time planners uh, uh, you've been stewards of our transportation system not only the Turnpike Authority but at ODOT for many many years and I know you don't take lightly uh, the state stepping out there or the Turnpike Authority stepping out there and incurring debt uh, it's no small thing but uh, I know from where I've been sitting for the, since 1990 that this is way past due. And I'm concerned uh, that we need to get about it now. And uh, I appreciate you guys personally and professionally stepping out there and being willing to take the criticism 20 years ago and to take the criticism and the challenges today. Uh, but if we don't do this, we're going to fall farther and farther and farther behind. Uh, and uh, these routes that you've laid out today, the, the planning uh, and the analysis that's gone in into them, appreciate your staff at ODOT, Mike, uh, rising up to the challenge and the commission uh, or the, the Turnpike Authority members, you guys that are here today. It's so important to our state. Some people don't quite realize that. Uh, we're thinking in the future, we're not, but we're also thinking about just tomorrow because that flat tire can happen in the next 10 seconds. And uh, there can be another fatality. I mean, what has the fatality account been in Central? I mean, since we're directing everybody to come right to Oklahoma City to get out of our state sometimes with so few north-south corridors to get out of here, tell us some, something about that. Well, the, the Department of Transportation is the keeper of the books on, on accidents, fatalities, personal injuries. And uh, over a 10-year period that ended in, in 2014, and people have asked me, well, why didn't you end the study in 2015? The sad truth is, is that uh, all of the fatalities aren't accounted for and that happened in 2015 and won't be for, for a while. Uh, but the sad story is on I-35 from the I-240 junction up to I-40, and uh, about a half mile east and west, of that interchange on I-40. Uh, in a 10-year period, we had over 6,000 accidents. Nearly 3,000 of those had personal injuries. I can't tell you the number of fatalities that were there. But congestion breeds accidents. And then more accidents breeds more congestion. And these are some of the more serious accidents that you have. If you think about a high-speed interstate type roadway, and uh, uh, an 18-wheeler coming up over a hill and traffic is stopped right ahead of them. We see this happen a lot uh, more than we'd like to talk about. Uh, and again, these are most of the time serious accidents that occur. These are not fender benders. But uh, ODOT, again, I can't say enough for the Department of Transportation, uh, bringing this to our attention and discussing uh, the need that they had and for the leadership of Turnpike Authority, both with their members uh, and the uh, acting director or interim director. Uh, I just call him secretary. That's easier, it's easier to remember. Uh, but I can't say enough about the, the time and the work and the effort and the planning that they put in to get this far. And uh, appreciate your comments, Mr. Chairman. And, and uh, uh, again, the the members of this body working together again with the authority members has been a real pleasure to be with. Thank you. Well, I know a lot of people are concerned about, well, this is going to change uh, our life. This is going to, there are going to be a lot of changes and we all know that change is hard. Uh, one of the questions that came up was, uh, is this going to completely solve all of our problems? And, um, if you would make some comments about that, because it, it, I think it would be important for people to know, is this going to fix everything? It certainly will not, but we believe that, uh, uh, that it will slow the growth uh, that we're seeing on the I-35 corridor and the I-44 corridor. Uh, and the I-40 corridor. It, we think that this will help slow the growth, that people will have other alternatives to take if you're coming out of Norman and Moore or Dallas and you're wanting to go to, um, uh, to uh, Tulsa, uh, you would have a, a different alternative to take other than to go right through the heart of Oklahoma City. 
Uh, and again, we believe that this will will start to slow the growth uh, that we've experienced. And, you know, we were talking about the numbers uh, that uh, Director Patterson was talking about. Uh, if the numbers hold true that ACOG has put out that the Oklahoma City metropolitan area will grow to about 1.6 million people uh, in the next 20 years, they're at about 1.2 now. That's about a 30, 35 percent increase in population. I'm not going to tell you that traffic vehicles will increase, daily traffic vehicles will increase by 30, 35 percent, but they're going to grow. And uh, we already have a problem now, uh, certainly with that anticipated growth over the next 20 years. We, we not only have a serious problem today, it will become unsurmountable uh, in the future. You will become more like Houston uh, or Atlanta. Uh, when they talk about the numbers that Director Patterson talked about at uh, 160,000 vehicles a day out here on I-44, uh, just on the north leg of I-40, I-44, you take a, a just a 20 percent growth in the next 20 years. That's just a percent a year, and I can assure you that it'll be greater than that. Uh, all of a sudden now you're, you're uh, well over 200,000 vehicles uh, on one leg of an interchange and really no place else to build on that corridor. So uh, the, the director's right and certainly the secretary's right in figuring out a plan to move forward and I think, uh, I think they've done yeoman work to get this far so quick. About all I'm good for these days is a historic perspective. Uh, and looking around the room, I don't know anybody that's been around here longer than I have. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe one or two. <laughs> uh, but I've, I've been watching the uh, scene on the highways of Oklahoma for 60 uh, five years now. My first job was uh, when I was 16 years old on 152, working for a drainage structure contractor. <clears throat> I think my biggest contribution was the form builder said, if you needed a board, look for Neil, cause he's standing on it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, conditions now of our state highway system and what they were 63 years ago are just incomparable. In they're not comparable. And we've made giant strides in the last 10 years in eliminating some of our safety problems and structural problems and congestion problems. But will this job ever be finished? No, I don't think it ever will, as long as our state continues to grow and who here votes for no growth for our economy and our state. As long as it continues to grow and it's healthy, we will need to expand our highway system. And it's people like yourselves uh, that have to exercise their vision and their commitment to the future of Oklahoma. And I salute you all. Appreciate you guys' comments. Uh, does any other commissioner have a question or a comment that they would like to make? The reason there's so much silence is we've all worked on this so much and, and the challenge is so great, it's self-evident. We all know that sitting in this room. Uh, we could all sit here forever and talk about the freight corridors and the pressure there. I mean, look, look at what's happening with just freight corridors. I mean, the, the pressure it's putting on our highway system is tremendous. And if we can uh, convince you guys at the Turnpike Authority to give us a hand and it's prudent and responsible and well planned, uh, we're going to be a thousand percent behind you. And that's why we are today. Uh, we thank you for that presentation. Uh, Director Patterson, do you have any final comments? Uh, are we ready to move on for uh, the director's report? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, Mr. Secretary again, Secretary Michaela, thank you for being here today. Appreciate uh, all the hard work you guys have put into our last discussion. A few months ago, uh, 
our administrator from the highway administration, local administrator, retired, Gary Carino retired, and he has been replaced, again, a couple of months ago, by Bashar Siddiqui. Bashar is sitting to my left and to my back. And Bashar, if you please stand up so everybody could recognize you. <laughs> we feel very fortunate to have Mr. Siddiqui. Uh, unusual for the Federal Highway Administration that they take the deputy administrator in a local office and promote him to the head guy. So we've been working with him for uh, a couple of years. And uh, he's bringing a great command to his new position with the Federal Highway Administration. Earlier, uh, you approved another round of rail crossing safety projects. You know, and when we got into this, you recall we're using the proceeds off the sale of the Sooner Sub, the line from Oklahoma City to Tulsa, to help finance our new rail crossing safety initiative, which nationally is being acclaimed as very proactive. No state is taking up this kind of an effort. In the past, we've been setting aside about $8 million a year in this effort, and it was primarily federal funds. But this time, we're going to drop a $100 million over the next three years. I thought it important to note that this month, you did 26 different items at 28 different locations. Let that sink in. That's more than we used to do in a year. In the last eight months, you've done 97 locations, $27 million. In the last eight months, you did three times what you normally do in a year. Thank you for letting us do this. We're making an impact. And it's not so much on the highway system. I want to remind you that most of the projects are not on the highway system. They're on the local roads. So we're helping the county roads, the city streets, provide that additional safety. The railroad companies are all coming together, and they're very active in this project. They, they see what opportunities they have to provide safety, and, and they desperately need it. Also, during the same period of time, we closed five different crossings as part of this whole package. So we're making a difference. You guys are making a difference, and I really appreciate that. One of the projects that you just approved is a major project here in Oklahoma City. Mr. Dells was up here with your awards, but the I-235 project north of 36th Street, remember we had some issues with our design and we had to take it back out for bid and we got a great contractor working on it in Allen Construction and they're going to get started on it and it's going to change the way I-235 operates. It's got the railroad bridge. It's going to be something when this thing gets under construction. I'm not sure how Jeff Allen is actually going to put piece this thing together, but he's been at this a while and he'll, I'm sure he's staying up late at night trying to figure this out. But I'm confident that we got the right guy on this job. But it brings to mind all the construction that we have ongoing. And what we've done this last month in our work zone safety program. And how you guys, I have David Burridge with orange ribbon. And this is a beautiful thing. He's got the orange and black. And he thinks it's about OSU, but it's not. It's about work zone safety. We have to remember the 59 fallen workers here at ODOT, those who died in the line of duty, and the thousands of people that these guys represent, the work zone warriors, and the fact that they would stand up and expose themselves, tell you about their families. Think about this. Most, most of us were very private people, but they they're willing to stand up and talk about what they do, the encounters they've had with the traveling public, and talk about their families. And I, I mean, that's monumental for me. But we have to also remember, in the last five years, the 84 people who have died in work zones just in Oklahoma. 
84 have died in work zones just in Oklahoma in the last five years. And, and that's almost inconceivable. And so what we're trying to do with this two-month period is bring about behavioral modification. We need people to put their cell phones up. We need 10 and 2 on the steering wheel. We need you to slow down and pay attention. And if you'll do all those things, we can really change those numbers, both of the ODOT workers and the 84 passengers and drivers that went through our work zones. This last month in April, we had some events, and I told you about those events. One of the great things, and it's kind of fun to do, is work zone Wednesdays where we're on our big message boards. We've got new messages for the drivers trying to get some attention, get them to think about what they're doing. We've also had two media events, one in Oklahoma City and one in Tulsa, and I really appreciate the media coming out and making that information available to their viewers and their listeners. We also have our Facebook page up. As Paul talked about, that's to reach out. We're reaching out through television, newspaper, radio, Facebook, whatever, however we can get to people. And through our Facebook page, we've talked about our work zone warriors. In the coming weeks, on May 9th, we're going to have, and I, I, this will be interesting, we're going to turn the bird down, down here. This is a tail flycatcher in Oklahoma City. We're going to turn it orange as well as the pillars on I-44, Commissioner, in Tulsa. We're going to turn those orange on May 9th, so that's a week from today. So those will be lit up in orange so that we can grab some attention. And then on the May 13th through the 22nd, ATSA uh, Foundation's National Work Zone Memorial Wall, which has the names of all of the fallen workers all across this country, are going to be, is going to be here in Oklahoma City at Penn Square Mall, 13th through the 18th, and then Woodland Hills Mall, the 20, 20th through the 22nd. All those names, including 59 ODOT employees. So we're going to have a couple of the media events at those locations. And I really appreciate, and we all really appreciate, Action Safety helping to sponsor having up that wall here in Oklahoma City. But work zone safety is paramount to us, not only in our construction areas, and you know, the Turnpike Authority is going to increase their construction activities in the very near future. As Secretary Ridley says, he's in a hurry and he wants to get it done, so we're gonna have a lot of activity there with the widening of the Turner Turnpike, the new extensions here, but ODOT is continuing to do their things. As I mentioned, I-235, which is kind of a heavily travel corridor, so we're going to have some activity over there. But all across this state every day, and right now as I stand here, we're doing a maintenance activity someplace, and we need people to pay attention. It's about construction and maintenance of the highway system here in Oklahoma, and we need people to pay attention. So I appreciate everybody's involvement. I appreciate your orange. I love the shoes. I wish it was in a size 13. I'd buy them from you. But as we move forward, please be aware of those things and get the word out. Please be a disciple for us, and we would uh, appreciate anything you could do to help. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Be happy to answer any questions. Does anyone in the commission or either one of the secretaries have any comments or questions? I think you covered it. Thank you, sir. We're going to keep our eyes open. We're going to support your work zone safety efforts. And uh, we look forward to the great things ODOT and the Turnpike Authority do together. There's uh, no further business. We're here a motion to adjourn. So moved. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. We are adjourned.